Order. First item is roll call. Alderman Bammon. Present. Alderman Coleman. Here. Alderman Hesley. Alderman Stratton. Here. Alderman Totten. Here. Alderman West. Here. All right. Uh, next item will be invocation by Wayne Geiger of First Baptist Church of Grand Valley, followed by a pledge of allegiance from Alderman West. Well, together. Father, we thank you for your great love for us, and thank you for this day. We thank you for the sunshine, we thank you for the rain, we recognize through all the seasons and the seasons of life that you are there, that you are God. We pray for those who have received too much water, we pray for just their peace, their comfort, we pray for families, we pray for uh, neighbors to come together to help. God, we thank you for this country, we thank you for the great freedom that we have, although we don't always agree, or we're thankful that we have the freedom to disagree. We thank you for those who stand in the gap for our freedom. We pray tonight for your wisdom and grace. We pray in thy name. Amen. Amen. Is the approval of the agenda? No changes, Mr. Mayor. Hmm? No changes, no proclamations. Move on to citizens' participation. Uh, we ask the citizens who wish to address the board, please come forward to the uh, podium and microphone and give your uh, name and address for the record. Do you have anyone who wishes to address the board this evening? Seeing none, let's move on to the consent agenda. Yeah, I move we accept the consent agenda. I'm going to approve the consent agenda. Do I have a second? Second. Second, Alderman Mammon. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Move on to previous business. We have an Outer Belt Entertainment LLC liquor license request. Mr. Mayor, members of the board, um, I will let uh, Teresa uh, just quickly recap the ask on the application. But as you all will know, this is uh, the liquor license application from Outer Belt. Uh, they're here this evening. Uh, originally, the board had had some discussion regarding the original recommendation. We brought back some uh, further information at the last uh, board meeting that we had. Um, based on a, a meeting that we had with the applicants. Uh, and after uh, Teresa just recaps the, the, the ask or the, inf the information on the application for the, t the times and the license they're requesting, I'm going to have Chief, uh, do, you still, do you have a handout uh, available for the board? I'm going to have you go over that real quick. Uh, just it would be uh, essentially terms uh, of any probationary license that was issued for uh, the group. So Outer Belt um, Entertainment LLC is looking to obtain a Class F retail on-off intoxicating liquor license, a Class H restaurant bar on-off premise intoxicating liquor, Class I restaurant bar Sunday on-off premises, and a Class M convention trade area on-off premises, which is the 3 a.m. license. Um, The applicants have a copy of it. So, based off of this, uh, these these are essentially the items that we talked about going through the uh, 
process that you'll see attached to the back of it is a map that outlines uh, improvements that they would be making to the property. Uh, really what this came out of is if the board does uh, issue the license, what are the defined um, items uh, for probation? You know, that's one of the questions that came up. How, how do we measure uh, success uh, versus not completing the probationary period uh, in, a, in a suitable fashion? So we just went back through the discussions that we had had, kind of captured the, the ideas that everybody had agreed to throughout the process, and uh, decided to provide this uh, to the board to recap those, you know, what those things were that were agreed to throughout the process uh, for your consideration. Happy to entertain any questions that you might have. I know that we've had um, quite a bit of discussion over this process. Uh, originally with the recommendation that was made and then uh, withdrawn, the re recommendation has after the, the meeting that we had with the applicants, the recommendation uh, has, has been uh, confirmed by Chief Veal uh, to allow them to come back to the board to seek the license. I know that I've screened a handful of, of questions from the board. Uh, Jim, I know that, that you've been part of the discussions kind of ongoing on and off uh, through this process. So if there's any questions that, that any of you have, um, this is the, the time to answer them. Uh, if not, we need a motion and a vote this evening as to which direction the board's going to go. Anyone have any questions? So tonight's action would be a yes or no vote on 3 a.m. license? The licenses that Teresa Yeah, the licenses that Teresa Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> we, we've talked about a lot of different options, you know, the times that we've met and discussed this item on multiple occasions. Um, talked about a I guess the past precedent of a probationary period of time, as we've, we've inquired of, as to the, the folks that, that join us these last few meetings about what their interest would be in a 130. Uh, and understand that there's not a lot of interest there, at least in, in past discussions there hasn't been. Whatever motion that gets made, I guess, needs to encompass all the, the, the varying viewpoints and opinions somehow to just decide yes or no. Is that kind of what it says? Okay. I don't have any other questions. Chief, um, the original, original um, information that you provided us was uh, Pretty much, a, a, you were recommending that we don't accept this. <clears throat> you have since had um, additional meetings and information. Is it your position at this point in time uh, that you would recommend moving forward? Yes, it is. And I know that we've had some information here provided to us. Um, what, in, in a nutshell, what is the reason that you're, you've changed your position on that? Well, one, we got additional information. Uh, it, and the additional information that we received answered some of the questions that was out there. Uh, and I just think it, moving forward with the um, reasons they gave to, to the concerns that I had, that if this went to court, I, m my belief is that a rational person hearing their uh, answers to the allegations would believe that they wasn't sure that these were charges against them. And I think that's one of the biggest things that I had uh, moving forward, uh, charge versus violation. 
And I think and I think that's what really got us holed up. So it's reasonable to believe that they didn't know that these were actually charges. Okay. So then my next statement or question is one of our biggest concerns has been in the past that that facility has taken a lot of our resources. And the concerns are on my behalf does, is there enough information here to, to provide you, because you're, you're the chief now, um, the confidence that you wouldn't have to use those resources moving forward? I think one of, moving forward, I think one of the things, um, we, we actually got off to a good start when we met prior to this council meeting. And I thought that was establishing a rapport. I think that's what we're going to have to do moving on. And if you look on this list of things that we agreed to, that was to meet quarterly. So if there's any underlying issues um, that I have as chief, they agree to cooperate fully with the police department, their investigations, their inspections. And I think we have to hold them accountable if they don't. Everything on this sheet here that they agreed to, I think we need to hold them accountable if, if they don't produce. And that's what I aim to do. So a couple questions on that, if I may. Yeah, Mr. Cook, do you have a copy of this plan agreement thing? Okay. I guess my, my question is to you from a legal standpoint. You know, they've made these plan agreements with Chief, how, what leg do we have to stand on regarding you? I mean, because this doesn't, I mean, this, this isn't part of them, yay or nay, receiving a license. I mean, we, we've not stayed nay with it. We ran into it with other places before where they say they're going to do one thing and then something may not get done. I mean, is there any kind of recourse we have if something on this document doesn't get done or get done to the satisfaction we thought it was going to be? Because you can't really just say, oh, we're going to, you know, we're going to have a revocation of your liquor license because you did install the you know, lighting you said you were going to install. I mean, that's really not a reason for revocation, is it? You, you were asking or going to ask Mike the same question, yeah. maybe a little bit different. Yeah. So and, I'll, and also an example, when Whiskey Tango originally came to us, you know, we were sold with this idea of this professional security staff that was going to be, you know, ex-police officers, ex-military, you know, military, things like this, and I don't think that really ever came to fruition down there. Well, does, does this become an addendum to yeah. the license? And <laughs> And are the, the, the agreements that are defined here, are they in place before we're open for business on day one? Or is this a, a three-year or a five-year plan? How, how is this defined in the context of how the plan and the elements of the plan are actually <coughs> implemented and, and at, under what time frame? Well, my initial response, uh, having just seen this for the first time, is a lot of bullet points kind of go without question or go without comment because they're expected. A lot of the, <coughs> a lot of the training, uh, cooperate with the police department. I mean, that, that's kind of a, a non-starter. I, I, everyone is expected to cooperate with the police department. Um, the first place I would start is put some time frames, dates on this. There's no, um, there's no, for example, add oversight to the head of security, fence off back lot. Some of these things that they're going to do, there has to be a time frame. There has to be a limit. Do it by, you know, 30 days or whatever you decide is reasonable. But if you don't do that, there's no way for the chief to come back and say you didn't do it you don't have a reasonable period of time to complete what they said they're going to do. Um, 
that's a start. And I think <coughs> if you grant the license, you can, uh, given the background we have with the current or the prior operator, um, I think you can attach these and make it a condition of the license. In other words, <coughs> it can be a, you know, the, the code provides for a probationary period. Now, typically, we don't do that. But Whiskey Tango has not been a typical business because of the problems that have gone with it that Alderman Coleman touched. And those are issues that directly impact how it's going to operate moving forward, police department, personnel, the time down there. And all of these, I'm guessing most of these were generated Whiskey Tango Improvement Plan were generated because of concerns <coughs> expressed by the chief and the police department, probably the aldermen, probably the buyers, because they, they've seen how the place has been run. Uh, they certainly are aware of the police involvement. They're aware of the problems I have in municipal court with bar fights on every docket, virtually. So most of these look like to me someone sat down and said, all right, we gotta we have to change our our business plan here and clean up that area. So I'm comfortable with this kind this kind of a document, but it has to have some teeth in it. It's pretty loosey goosey right now. Yeah. We don't have any way of saying, Hey guys, you said you're gonna do this, but you didn't say when you're gonna And I have no idea if it's even comprehensive enough. So, thank you, Mr. Council for all. My name is Curtis Holland. I'm a lawyer with Fulton Only Firm. I'm the one who drafted that letter, and sent it to you Friday, which really was a recapitulate what we had talked about with the chief and uh, give you some more facts. So, just having them presented this, these are things we've talked about already uh, with the chief, yes. and by and large are agreeable. We're agreeable to them. Our, our goal is to try to get in there and clean up, improve, upgrade the place and have uh, not have the issues that you had with uh, with what's going on out there. Uh, you know, we understand that there is a six month six month probationary term. Um, it, it's possible that, you know, if we if we don't perform, we, we recognize that our three AM license might become a jeopardy in that in that regard. I mean the three AM license is very important to our business model, so we'd like to keep that moving forward if we can. Um, as far as a time period to, to do all these things, there are certain things we can we can work towards pretty quickly, pretty immediately. Um, some of those might take the city's cooperation with us, for example, the fencing and lighting and so so forth. But I, I think uh, our goal is to get in and start these things immediately and proceed with due diligence to get these improvements done. And to upgrade the facility and to do these 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 things that are listed in the in the sheet here, in, in talking to, to my client, I think you know it, it's hard day one to have all that in place, but I think within 30, 60, 60 days or so, assuming that we have uh, you know we get you our plans for the fencing and the lighting and there's some cooperation and we get a contractor to get out there and install it. You know, it, it maybe it's three months. I don't know, but it's within a short short period of time that we would address these issues. Um, you know, so I mean, I guess that's all I can say. There was some. There was so, some I mean, would you be would they be comfortable then with saying 90 days from the? I don't know. I really closely, but I guess whenever right. their opening under their license would be 90 days from that. Well, and if, if I may, Mr. Yeah. Mayor, um, this actually came up in our department head meeting this afternoon. This was uh, as we were kind of discussing the, the process that we're going to go through tonight and this conversation, uh, we wanted to make sure that we had kind of those measurables in, in, in there for the probationary period. And so it was not our recommendation that these be completed before uh, the opening. It, it was if we were going to take a look at a six-month period, what are some some measurable, definable goals. I mean, some of them aren't measurable. Cooperation with the police department, you either do or you don't. You know, there's no halfway. But with the lights or the cameras, those, those sort of things, those were all uh, uh, items that we anticipated seeing some movement, movement forward towards 
during the, the probationary period. That way, when Chief had quarterly meetings with the, the applicant, uh, we could say, hey, you guys haven't even submitted an application for a permit for the, the fence, or you haven't started any electrical drawings or schematics for the, the parking lot lights out here. So we didn't want to put the list together um, to, you know, uh, back them into the corner to the degree that they have to have this done by day one. We were looking at it more of a, uh, a during the, the entire probationary period. So I just wanted to let you know how that came about. Thanks. And it's a practical matter. We can't begin to do these things unless and until we buy and acquire the business. And certainly not going to be doing that if we can't get the license approved and issued. So it's a, it's a step by step process. And I think. There has to be some good faith effort on both our parts that we're going to move forward towards these things. Ultimately, all the power rests with you all. You're the decision maker. So, um, you know, we want to work with you to get these things uh, done and move through in a timely basis and work with the chief. I mean, quarterly, we were talking monthly. If, 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 we, need to, if we need to meet more often than quarterly, we're going to do that as needed, really, is how that should work. But Can I have a suggestion? Uh, challenge two and three to me with the weather coming up that we have, number one is going to be hard to get it all done. But at two and three, I figure it could be done, I mean, within a reasonable time. Weather's not going to provide, I mean, cause any problem. But I'm concerned about all of this other building and stuff during the winter, like this morning. Well, Jim, Jim, correct me if I'm wrong. They have the six month probationary period, but then also licenses renew July 1st. Yes. So, really, in theory, July 1st rolls around. We haven't seen movement on these items that is satisfactory for us. We just don't renew the license come July 1st. I mean, how, does this hold water to that to give us the right to do that? I don't like that because I don't want to wait and then have the applicant come in and say, well, we didn't do it, you didn't do anything about it. So you tacitly approved it. Uh, not that Kirk would ever do that, but uh, that would be a good lawyer who would say, you sat back sitting and didn't do anything. So there's really no harm, no foul. We'll get it done. The purpose behind this is to put some times on here. 30, 60 is reasonable. Some of these are immediate, uh, like Alderman Totten said. You can do a lot of these things immediately upon opening. You remove the cockpit, oversized cockpit. You know how long it's going to take to get the training done. Put that in. That's easy. Uh, some of them you're going to have to, you know, like the fencing and the lighting. Maybe that's 30, 60. I don't know. But we've got to have some teeth in it. I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to uh, go anywhere past six months. And I would put some immediacy in, in most of them. If they don't get it done in six months, then it's on them. They, they had plenty of, of advanced knowledge that we're requiring these things to be done. So really if we just say that all these items would be completed within six months? I think that's, that's the purpose of the probationary period. I would hope you would stress to the applicant, we'd like to see it done in 30 to 60 days. I have another question. Sorry, Mr. Cook. I'm going to put yes. you on the spot a little bit with this. <clears throat> so, so we so we build this into this agreement. And you know, as as I've had some amount of time to sit up here and listen to different things and reports and various statistics from uh, Chief Beal's predecessor and different things like that, uh, review of uh, court proceedings and cases that have been brought forward that were associated with the establishment as it sits today and, and different things like that. Let's say something horrible does happen there. After, after these measures are adopted and after we as an entity have taken action on them, do we become culpable, culpable in those proceedings if, if we're the ones that are requiring this to happen and it still doesn't prevent some of the, the, some of the things that have happened down at that place over the years? I suppose anybody can be sued for anything. I don't 
I don't have as much concern about that because you're doing the right thing. You're setting out the right restrictions. You're doing everything you can do as a, as a governmental body. To do. Uh, so you, you, you have certain immunity anyway, but you also, you're not ignoring it. If, if you ignored it, turned your head, then maybe I'd have a little more concern. But it's still a governmental uh, entity. Uh, I don't want to say no, never. But I, I, my comfort level is pretty high that by doing what you're thinking about doing, you're, you're protected. Thank you. You certainly haven't been negligent in turning your head and letting them continue to operate <coughs> in a manner that could cause harm. And I just wanted to remind you that you know the license. There's a license already on the property. It's good for a year. So we walk away. You're stuck with a year license there as it is. Um, this gives an opportunity for a fresh ownership to come in, upgrade the facility, hopefully prove to you that they're worthy of, a new, of, an, of another chance. That's that's what we're asking. How uh, long do, do they think it would take them to get the fencing and the lighting? Well, we talked about. A, a kind of a three three month period where we would be able to come in and give a, submit a building plan. I mean, we have to get a building plan, a building permit for the fencing and so forth. Right. Yeah. You, yeah. you have a copy of this, right? Yes, sir. Okay. I mean, it, 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 if you said six months, it would be done in six months. Okay. okay. Well, yeah, I mean, just, we were just kind of going through this. If someone makes a motion to approve it as, you know, part of that motion, if they said, you know, items under outside of business would be done within six months, uh, items under inside business will be done up in 30 days. Uh, items under employees will be done up in 30 days. And then owner's agreement, that would be day one. I mean, would those be acceptable? I, I, from what I could tell from the list, I think that's okay. The one, I wasn't, I, I wasn't familiar with this. Uh, trained by the state control, state alcohol control, what that was. I'm not sure what that is. Yes. Is that something that, I don't know how this looks like or not. Yeah, I just have to set up the training for them. Would they like come out to the facility or do we go, how does that work? Yeah, they, can, they could either come to you guys and yeah. perform the training or, or you guys can go out to them. Right. I don't see those as being problematic. But, uh, I'm not, I'm not it's, a ma this. it's just a matter of me setting it up. I mean, certainly those can be done relatively quickly. And not not this whole six month thing, but I would I would expect the fencing and the lighting, even though it is winter. I don't know what winter's gonna be like this year. I mean, sometimes you can do that kind of stuff. And you couldn't have done it today. No, today. <laughs> what <clears throat> the uh, meeting of quarterly versus the monthly, from your viewpoint, is monthly too often for you? Monthly is not too often, but I was just trying to set a standard based on this to give them time to actually implement some of the things that they were planning on doing. Do you feel that you would rather do it quarterly or monthly? Personally, I would rather do it quarterly. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Now, they do know there's a sweet little old lady that will be down there checking on them just like she did before. Okay, I have a question. I don't know if it's for Mayor Todd or for uh, Mr. Cliff, but um, do we have to approve a 130 with a six-month probation, or can it just be a 130 period? This is the 330. You mean... Does that make sense, what I'm asking? Like, you talking about just, just doing 130, not 3 o'clock? Yes. Okay. I mean, how is that? I mean, if they're requesting, I guess what she's asking, is they're requesting the 3 o'clock. Can the board change that? So, any, no, this is, it, it says any licensee, uh, or I'm sorry, any license issued for the first time uh, shall be. Uh, on a probationary basis for six months. So what she's asking though is I think can the motion be made by this board to only authorize 130? Is that, I think that's what she's asking. Oh yeah, I mean the board, the board can authorize um, 
a class F, a class M. I mean, we'll, it, that's ultimately that's up to the board which license is going to be uh, issued. I don't know, Jim. Is there any issue with the board changing what they would allow versus what was requested through the application? Well, I think the applications for three o'clock for an all-inclusive three o'clock license, and that's the license that the current or current owner has. I think you would be it would be difficult to approve less than that now, because that that license is on the books. And there's got to be a, a reason for you to change it. You're going to change it, the code, then change the code. But I don't think you can. I would be very uh, uncomfortable not approve if you're going to approve any of them, any of them, approve all of them. That's my opinion, so, legal. Point. So you're saying the motion is for either to approve it all or don't make a motion to approve any of it. Correct. It's absent the applicant saying I'll amend my application and I'll I'll go one third, which I haven't heard happen. Any additional questions? Okay. Would anyone wish to make a motion? I'll make a motion for them to uh, get their three o'clock license with what we have stated here if they for the six month probation with all of the things that we've listed that they have to complete within the time frame that we've mentioned. Okay. So the six months for outside business, 30 days for the inside employees, and then day one for the last thing. Okay. Motion from Alderman Coleman, second Alderman Totten. Any discussion? Could we make sure for the record that we have some reference to the document that says outside, inside employees so that I get into an argument or later. Yeah, and I wrote on that copy. Agreed. I want to be able to point to something. I would suggest we use this letter. Yeah. And I, and I wrote the times on there that you can remember writing at the back of it. Mm -hmm. okay. So, should I just clarify? Yeah. Yes. Um, Outside of business, one, two, and three, six months. Inside of business, one, two, and three, 30 days. Employees, one through seven, 30 days. Owner's agreement from beginning of operation. And those, and those are like six months from day they open under their license. The day the, day the license is issued. Okay, the day the license is issued. There's no time frame for them to take the train to the police department, is there? I mean, it's... I can get that set up. Okay. I can set that up. Any additional questions or discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Aye. aye. Right. Roll call. Mammon. No. West? Yes. Coleman? Yes. Cotton? Yes. Stratton? No. Three, two. Three, two. Okay. Is that correct, Jim? We don't, we don't need We've it. We've ran it before. Yeah. Not an ordinance. Three two, so okay, it's not an ordinance. Because so ordinance you have to have a majority of the seated board, right? Okay. Majority majority controls not an ordinance. Not an ordinance. Okay. Right. Seeing no items under new business presentations or public hearings, move on to ordinances. It will be eighteen dash seventeen, second reading. Ordinance two four four four. Ordinance approving the final plat of Rosewood Hills ninth plat. Phase A. Second reading, ordinance 2444. I move that we accept bill number uh, B1817 for its second reading and make it into an ordinance. 2444, is that what you said? 
Yes. Thank you. I have a motion on the top to approve Bill B18-17 for its second reading, making ordinance 2444. Do I have a second? Second. Is that going west? Mr. Mayor, members of the board, this is just the second read that will give the final approval to Rosewood Hills Ninth Plat Phase A. This plat consists of 32 lots and two tracks. If you have any questions, Mr. Arroyo can answer those. Any questions or discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Yes. Cotton? Yes. Coleman? Yes. Stratton? Yes. West? Yes. 5-0 Mayor. Resolution R18-42 is a resolution by the Board of Aldermen, City of Green Valley, authorizing the write-off of doubtful utility account balances. Resolution R18-42. Resolution R18-42 is read. I have a motion from Auburn West to approve resolution R18-42. Do I have a second? Second. Second, second Auburn Coleman. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor, members of the board, these are utility billing accounts uh, that were that had balances from 2012 and 2013. It's just a matter of housekeeping. We go through and identify uh, account balances that are doubtful that we will be able to collect. Accordingly, we have $28,806.15 from water and $15,511 from sewer. Uh, this resolution will, um, will approve the write-off of those uncollectible or bankrupt accounts. If you have any additional questions, Ms. Bowden can answer them. Uh, there is uh, the follow-up to the, the listing is in the pages behind the resolution. Questions or discussion? How, how much are we talking about being written out? $44,317.15. And it's just for the time frame of 2012-2013? Yes, sir. Um, what makes them uncollectible? Uh, bankruptcy. They've uh, been um, submitted to the collection agencies, and they've been submitted to the collection bureaus, and they haven't been collected at this point. Yeah. And you want to bring your receivables down on your balance sheet to a, a true number? So. Yeah. Essentially at this point, these are monies that were due um, seven years ago, six to seven years mm -hmm. ago. Or five, I'm sorry, five to six years ago. Yeah. Uh, the longer that we hold those uncollectibles out there, the more it artificially inflates our receivables. Yeah. You know, a lot of them, correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of them were like people that probably moved and then wondering, like they're, they're probably no longer in town. They probably moved out of town and didn't pay their wa last water bill. And now it's like how you how you track them down, you know. Well, and it's been with collection our collection agency for you know five to six years. Uh, it's unlikely to be collected at this point, which is why we write it off. Yeah, I don't think any of them are still in town. I mean, they're not like enjoying water somewhere else <laughs> on another street. So, any other questions or discussions? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. 5 0, Mayor. Next up, City Attorney's Report. Nothing to report, Your Honor. Thank you. Right. Next up, City Administrator and Staff Report. Uh, Mr. Arroyo. Thank you, Mayor. Members of the Board, I just wanted to remind you guys that our household hazardous waste event is October 20th at 8 a.m. to noon, and it's over at the um, Jackson County uh, facility off of Old 40 Highway. So. Uh, they will accept uh, mostly it's paint and uh, chemicals. They do not accept electronics. So just wanted to remind you guys of that. Thank you. I have uh, just a few things, Mr. Mayor, quickly. Um, and this letter out to you, this is a letter that the city received from the Central Jackson County Fire Protection District. Senate Bill 870 authorized the Additional withholding of collections for fire districts on Chapter 99, Chapter 100, and Chapter 353 tax incentive projects. And essentially, what this bill did, what this bill did was to allow the fire protection districts to participate in these type of projects or not. So they can annually set an amount that they're going to participate in our 
economic development uh, projects. Chapter 99 is the statute that um, essentially authorizes TIF, its land clearance for redevelopment authority. Chapter 100 uh, is industrial development bonds, and Chapter 353 is urban redevelopment corporation projects uh, where blight is used. So as you can see, this letter is from Chief Groat of CJC uh, stating that they have set their, their uh, increases that will be effective on August 29th of, of this year, so uh, it went into effect several, well, about a month ago. Uh, they will be participating in Chapter 99, 100, and 353 projects to uh, the tune of about 25%. So uh, if there was a, a Chapter 100 project, let's say that uh, previous to this, this bill that was passed in July and signed by the governor, uh, the school district, CJC, um, all the taxing authorities participated at 0%, so they were able to withhold 0% uh, according to the, the bill, and it's still, this, this bill is still running through some uh, legal opinions, uh, but according to the bill, they have set these, these amounts to withhold 75% of any economic development project that would come new to the city or any project that we would amend from this date forward. So. Uh, I'll have more information as uh, any legal opinions arise on that front. I uh, just wanted to confirm that we're having a budget workshop on October 29th at 6 p.m. It will be at the community center in the Winona Burgess room. And then the last piece of business that I had is uh, related to the reschedule of the November board meeting. Uh, it was originally set on November 12th but we will be closed for observation of Veterans Day. So we sent out the poll. Everybody, uh, we were able to get, on one evening, we were able to get five of the six uh, participants in. And I'm sorry, why is there not seven? I'm just looking at this. We've got this mm -hmm. yeah. Jeff, Jeff, did you <laughs> reply to this? Nope, apparently not. Are you, uh, well, as of right now, we, we can't, the only night we could even get a quorum is November 13th, which is Tuesday. Chris, that evening you weren't a, able to attend, but of the rest of the meetings, we, were, we weren't even able to get a, the quorum. So uh, are you available Tuesday the 13th? Yes. Okay. If uh, that's suitable for the rest of the board, then we will just go ahead and move that meeting from the 12th to the 13th. Normal time, yes. That works for everybody? Maybe, maybe not. You may have to fight with mine. All right. You may have to fight with mine. What? I didn't get a response. You may have to fight with mine. <laughs> no, I may be doing it in the house. I don't know. Uh, that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. All right. Next up is the Board of Alderman Reports and Comments. <coughs> Alderman Stratton? Nothing to report. Alderman Totten? Well, I'm going to brag again because I'm so proud of all the people in the front street and the racetrack. They have allotted me with CAN $492. A donation was given to make it $500. And then when I'm bragging and thanking everybody at the racetrack, a lady gave me another $100. I am proud to say we've already given out $300 and we're getting ready to go around again for another. 300, but I want to say thank you, and you know there's people out there that like to live for the police department. Hey, it doesn't take you five minutes, and look what people can do. We need to get together and working for the community, and if we're taking your trash and making money with it, come on. We can do it. Ask Shannon. He helped me with Ronald McDonald house, and he almost died when I got him 28 large yellow cat litter containers of pop pop. Now, we can do it. Let's get together. And I'm awful sorry if I upset the power and light company, but that's okay. We got it done. Alvin Coleman? Nothing to report, Mayor. Alvin West? Nothing to report, Mayor. Alvin Bayman? Nothing to report. Okay. Next up is the mayor's report. I have nothing to report this evening. Uh, check to the session. We thought we did have one for personnel. Yes. Okay. So
uh, we will have an executive session for personnel. So I will entertain a motion to adjourn the executive session. Well moved. Yes, Mr. Coleman, second by? Second. Cotton. Any discussion? No. Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, say the sign. Alderman Stratton? Yes. Alderman Cotton? Yep. Alderman Coleman? Yes. Alderman West? Alderman Bannon? Yes. All right, we're adjourning the next session.